Let's talk, uh, re resistance is uh, really important concept, and uh, we're going to get to one of the essential ideas in electromagnetism and circuits and all that, and that's Ohm's law. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to go through the actual derivation of all this. You've got Ohm's law that isn't used very much, hardly at all, like maybe once. But it will lead to a definition of resistance, and then we're going to use that definition of resistance to get the real Ohm's law, the Ohm's law that we're going to use in here a lot. And now um, we're going to just to give you a hint about you know what like resistance and what is what is a resistor. A resistor is something that extracts the energy out of flowing charge. Okay, anything that takes energy out. Now remember what a capacitor does. A capacitor stores energy. When a battery pushes current and then fills up a capacitor, what the capacitor does is it stores up the energy in an electric field between the plates. But what a resistor is going to do, it's going to actually take the energy out of the circuit. Now it can do something useful, like uh, it could be a heating element or a light bulb or turn a propeller or, you know, make uh, your cell phone work or, you know, light up something. But it uses the uh, a resistor, a resistive element is anything in a circuit that takes energy out. Okay, so that's uh, ultimately where we're going with this. And so if you're thinking about, um, you know, a, a career in electrical or electronic engineering or computer engineering or anything like that, this is vocational training right here. I mean, this is essential uh, information. Well, um, let's go back to what we were talking about before, and let's take a look at a chunk of wire here. Let me zoom out. Now, what we're going to do here, let, let's actually get real. Um, I'm going to draw a few representative atoms in here and these little dots represent the nuclei of let's say copper atoms and then surrounding these guys are free moving electrons now for copper it turns out that each copper atom has one elect one valence electron that's free to move about the metal so what happens when you turn the, the lights on or when you flick the switch of a, of, a, of a flashlight, is it the battery or the, whatever your voltage source is establishes an electric field in the conducting material? Flick the lights on and there's our electric field, E. What do electric fields do? They apply forces to objects that have charge. Now the protons, or the, uh, the nuclei, are fixed. And most of the electrons are fixed. But the valence electrons are now free to move. Okay, and they are going to drift. Now the electrons are actually going to drift to the left, aren't they? Because they are negatively charged. And this is the unfortunate thing. I mean, if, if Franklin had just picked, guess what? differently but we're stuck with this because this is convention and it's in all the textbooks the military after world war ii tried to switch the charges on protons and electrons and nobody listened so I, we're stuck with this uh, but anyway here's our free moving electron now let's take a look at one of them it's actually feeling a force to the left so it's going to go to the left like let's say it was already moving when you turn this on so it's going to go to the left and then bam bam Bam, 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 bam. Now what it does is that this free moving electron runs into stuff. It runs into other atoms. It runs into other electrons. It, it's like a little pinball in a pinball machine. It's a gigantic pinball machine that just slopes down forever. Now it sometimes is moving in the wrong direction, but there's a force on it that inevitably pulls it back and so it ooh, 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 
like that. It drifts. Now, its velocity, the velocity of the specific electron, it's varying with time. But we average it. We average it, and that average is the drift velocity of the electron moving through the wire. This way. Of course, the electrons are moving this way, so what do we do? We say the current is actually flowing this way. Because current, current is by definition the flow of positive charge, not the flow of negative charge. So the electrons are moving to the left, but what that means is that, you know, math, by our mathematical definition of what current is, the current is moving to the right. So that's a little confusing. Well, these electrons have um, a drift velocity. And we said that the current is equal to uh, the number of charges per unit volume, the charge on each charge carrier, and um, the cross-sectional area uh, times the drift velocity. And by the way, if you go through this, you'll actually get the correct units for current. We didn't do that last time. Let's do let's do that. This is the number of atom or uh, charge carriers. So carriers per volume. What's volume? Meters cubed times charge. What's that? Coulombs. This is coulombs. Area meters squared. Velocity meters per second. Meters times uh, meters squared times meters. It's meters cubed. Oh, cancels that. Carriers, it's just a counting number. It doesn't really have a unit. You have coulombs per second. Woohoo! That's an amp. That's current. Okay, so now we're going to define a new quantity that we're going to use this one and only one time. We're going to divide by the, it's both sides by the area. And so what we're going to get is this new thing, J. Now, J is called the current density. And the current density um, is the uh, current per unit area. How much current you have divided by the cross-sectional area. So we call that current density. A lot of times anything like per unit area, per unit volume, per unit length. We call those densities, right? Well, this is the density of current. How crowded this current is in a given cross-section. Right, there's my area. So how much current do I have flowing through here per cross-sectional area? And we call that current density. And of course, it has units of amps per square meter. Well, here, this guy named Ohm, George Simon Ohm, a high school teacher, my hero, and later a professor, oh, he sold out, at the University of Munich, formulated the concept of resistance and discovered the proportionalities expressed in Ohm's law. Okay, so they named it Ohm's law, named it after him, and they named a unit after him. It's not a very flattering picture of him in the book. It looks kind of, I don't know, constipated or something, but on page 835 you can look at it. But anyway, um, here's what he said. Now, he said that there are some materials, and most of the materials we're going to work with are like this. There are some materials where, what if I double the strength of the electric field? Well, I'm going to double the current density. So, in other words, the current density, which is the current divided by the cross-sectional area, is also directly proportional to the electric field. So you take the magnitude of the electric field and you multiply it by this thing right here. Now this is really going to frustrate you because we're going to use this sigma, which we've used several times, to mean something here. This is called the conductivity. Of the, and it's a function of the material. It's how easily a material conducts electricity. The better the conductor, 
um, the more, well, if, if this is really high, like in copper, conductivity is really high, which means that for a given electric field, you got a lot of current density. You got a lot of current. Okay, very good. All right, so um, mo many materials have this kind of um, relationship where the current density is directly proportional to the strength of the electric field through the material. Um, if that's true, this is Ohm's law right here. Ohm's law. Um, we call that material ohmic. It's ohmic material. All right. And everything that we're going to use in this class is going to be ohmic. There are some materials when they get hot, like if you put a current through and they're going to get hot, when they get hot, the, the, this, this number changes with temperature. So sometimes the conductivity of the material can vary with temperature. We're not going to deal with that in here. Okay. Um, it's a real effect. It's important, but it's outside the scope of this class. So. Huh? Beyond the scope of this class. Very good. Okay, now we're going to take this idea and um, we're going to get a real Ohm's law. Well, here's what we've got. We've got J is equal to the current over the area. We defined that to be true. But we also said, oh, it's, it's E, uh, it's, well, it's this times, okay, so this is current density. Um, now, let's just take a look at this electric field here. Well, the strength of the electric field, if, if I go from here to here, uh, here's my delta x. Let, let's give this a length L. I think we called it delta x before, but in the book they're calling it L. Um, so the voltage difference, you know, from here to here, just the magnitude of that voltage difference is going to be um, E times L. And uh, let's see, so current is equal to this times um, delta e, delta V over L. I'll call it delta V over L because that's the electric field. Now, current though, we said was what? Um, oh, oh, that's right. So, ah. Let's just take, actually what I want to do is just take this and solve it for the change in voltage across the wire. And so delta V is equal to the current times what? Oh, I left out the A. What did I do with the A? Um, Sorry about this. This is I over A. I knew it. I knew it. So all I did was say, um, okay, here's the electric field. The electric field times the length is a voltage difference. I want to get Ohm's law in terms of voltage difference. So I just um, uh, say, okay, E is equal to delta V over L. Uh, substitute that in here. Now I'm going to take this and solve it for delta V. And you'll see why here in a second. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting the useful version of Ohm's law. And, and this is going to be, um, thank you. So delta V 
is equal to I times L over uh, sigma times A. Did I do that right? Okay. Now, <laughs> this, let me rearrange this. This is current. And then this right here is 1 over the conductivity times the length over the area. Now what this does is that this tells me what the voltage drop is in a, in a wire as current flows through it. Okay, so as the electrons flow this way, which means the current is flowing this way, I'm actually losing, uh, I'm, I'm dropping in voltage. Um, and think about it. Look at this electron. Bam! It bashes into something. Well, what happens to that something when you bash into it? You make that thing vibrate. And when that thing, what do you call it when atoms vibrate? They get what? The vibration of molecules. It's at a higher temperature now. So when you push current through a wire, it warms up the wire. And that consumes up energy, which means that the energy per unit charge is going to drop. And so we get, we get a voltage drop here, a change in voltage. Now, this is going to irritate you. This is one, one over the conductivity. OK, one over the conductivity is called resistivity which we're going to call rho. Okay, you got to you got to you got to send send them the complaints. I'm just the messenger, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. Um, and so we get we're going to get to we're almost there, we're almost to Ohm's law. So we get delta V, the change in voltage of a current running through a wire is equal to I times the resistivity of the material times the length of the material divided by the cross-sectional area of the material. Now resistivity here, now length, this, just, this is just how long your wire is. This area is just the cross-sectional area of the wire. This row is just the material you're using. Are you using aluminum wire, copper wire, silver wire, gold wire? magnesium wire, any kind of metal can be a wire. Now the resistivity of all these different kinds of conductors are listed in your book right here. This is table 27.1 on page 837. And But you can use this. Look at here, it's all the resistivities in ohm meters. Now this is a temperature coefficient. We are not going to mess with that, so you don't need that. But this, you know, silver, copper, gold, aluminum, tungsten, iron, platinum, lead, nichrome, carbon, germanium, silicon, glass, hard rubber, sulfur. Look at look at the uh, resistivity. Uh, Ten to the thirteen. That's very very resistive. Okay. Now we have a name. Uh, we we take all this and we combine it into a, um, let me zoom out, oh, that's right, I zoomed in. We, we take all this and we combine it into a single term called R, which stands for resistance. Now, I've gone through this torturous derivation it starts with current as a micro with drift velocity and you get to Ohm's law and then you make these crazy substitutions and you push this in you redefine you reciprocal of conductivity as resistivity and you get this you get this wonderful little equation um, it's just this delta V equals IR Ohm's law now, I want you to think about what R is. It's the last thing. 
R is, is if you solve for R, okay, here's how to think about resistance. Resistance says, oh, you want to push current through me? Here's how much voltage you're going to need. It's volts per amp. Oh, you want to push one volt? Or one, uh, you want to get one amp to go through me? You're going to need 20 volts. That, that would be 20 volts per amp. Okay, that's how resistive it is. Now let's take a look at units here. Volts per amp. Well, that has a name. It's called an ohm. But we don't want to use a capital O to represent ohms. Why? Because let's say I have 20 ohms. No. So we use a, this symbol. And that's why we use this symbol, because it's an omega, an O for ohm, but it's in a different alphabet. It looks a little different. So you can say R is 20 ohms. What does that mean? You need 20 volts to get one amp to flow through me. All right. Well, that is all for today. <laughs>